everybody. Welcome to our live. I'm here today with Luke Kusha. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I said it right. You right? got it right. Yeah. Thank God. So Luke is uh, one of the owners of Eagle Creek Ranch Recovery in Idaho, right? Yeah. So we're going to get to this program. This is a really unique, cool program that you guys have started. So yeah. I want to hear all about it towards the end. So everybody hold tight for that. Um, but thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to hear your story, where you come from, how you found yourself in recovery and how you found yourself working in the field. So if we could go back, um, when did you get sober and how did you get sober? So um, I get, I was trying to get sober for a while. Um, I guess, well, people were trying to get me sober for okay. a while. We'll just say that. Yeah. Um, so I had my first, um, you know, exposure to like, you know, a life in recovery, probably when I was like 21. Mm -hmm. um, my sobriety date's 8, 9, 19. Okay. So if that gives you any insight, I am yeah. one of the, um, you know, keep coming back people. Mm -hmm. If you're out there, keep coming back if uh, this applies to you because it worked for me. Right. Um, so yeah, 8, 9, 19, I got sober. Um, and yeah, that's one thing I can look back on and say that I never regretted doing, you mm -hmm. know, I, I believe it's the first time I actually tried and, and it worked. So what was different for you? Like, yes, it was for you that time, right? Yeah. But what was it that, that the light went off and you surrendered and the light went on, I should say, not yeah. went off, the light yeah. went off <laughs> and you surrendered and had the willingness. What was it that happened? Um, I think it was like a culmination of things. Like I, I always had this idea that um, I would be able to, you know, drink and like smoke weed uh, normally. Like a you gentleman. Know? Like a gentleman. <laughs> like like a lot of people around me do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, we're in it's twenty twenty three. You know, cannabis is pretty much on the same level as you know alcohol at this yeah. point. Um, and you know, being from Southern California, um, you know, drinking and smoking weed is just kind of like, I mean, it's probably like that everywhere, but I know that California is kind of known for that. So it was just yeah. always something that we did. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously as a, as a younger, you know, kid, you know, pretty early on, like started getting wrapped up into doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then that kind of, you know, just took me into places that I never thought that I would get to. Yeah. But I always, um, you know, weed and, and alcohol never really were a big deal for me. So I always thought if I could just stay off of all this other stuff, mm -hmm. then I'll just be able to go back to, to smoking weed and drinking. And Right. And but it never worked out. Right? No, I did. Yeah. It. I tried it a million times. Yeah. It didn't work. And story was the same for me and so many people out there. And I'm sure so many people that are listening right now that are either what's called California sober and to each their own, right? right? Like let people be their own person, let them have their own experience. But for me personally, like for you, smoking weed and drinking one way or another, it like led me back right. to the pills and the harder drugs and just set me off the rails. And for me, it was actually the alcohol in the end that really took me down a yeah. path where I got so sloppy and out of control that I had to get the help. So, right. but yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, I mean, I could go down a rabbit hole, the culture and society of these legal substances now. Right. And so people think, you know, in society, you go out, you have a drink, you go out, you smoke weed, people have anxiety. They feel awkward around people. They're going on a date. You know, you've got all these like dating sites now and all this yeah. stuff. People are like, I got to go have a drink. There was a yeah. show where they were showing like, the data on people on dating sites. And it was like nine times out of 10, they had to have a drink in order to go do that. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, there's so many people out there that are in that space right now. For so sure. So for you, um, what worked, you know, how were you able to overcome that? And what would be your suggestion to, to men out there that feel like that? Like I got to go drink and I got to smoke weed to right. go and have a good time. Um, I think for me, really, like I, I had to figure out why I felt like I needed to do that, um, you know, and really do some internal processing um, and inventory work on like what was really driving me to do the things that I was doing. Um, 
and just I can only speak to my own personal experience. Yeah. I was super consumed with what other people were going to think about me, right? For sure. And I would I would start putting thoughts in your mind of what you would be thinking about me without even knowing like what, you know. Yeah. I'm a case builder, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm already like, you know, thinking what you may be thinking about me. So when it came down to like smoking weed and having some beers like, you know, I would I would run it into the ground doing other stuff get in a lot of trouble, um, swear everything off forever, you know, and then I'd be like at the lake with my friends and they'd all be having a beer. And it's like, hey, you want a beer? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, they're going to think I'm lame if I don't have a beer. Or, you know, I just want to fit in or, yeah. you know, I don't want to be the odd man out. So right. I would always break it down and then end up having a beer. And in my experience, like I would drink the beer and like nothing bad would happen in that second. So I was like, maybe this wasn't as bad as, you know, I had already thought it to be, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would slowly just start chipping away at that resistance and then I'd end up right back where I started. And I love you saying that because it's so honest and real and that's what happens more times than not with people, right. you know? It's it's that, oh, I, I can drink socially. Oh, I can just, you know, the things we tell ourselves. Yeah. The rationalizing and, um, oh, I can just do it on the weekend or when I'm with my friends. And, and a lot of people don't want to talk about that. It, no, know, I mean, it's my thing is my thinking, yeah. you know, like I, I really had to, I could sum it up really simply. I had to concede like two simple things to myself and believe it at a hundred percent. Number one, if I drink or smoke weed or do anything mind altering, all bets are off from that point. It may take a long time to get me to where I came from. It may happen quickly, but I have lost the power of choice at that moment and I don't know where it's gonna take me. Secondly, and I think more importantly and most importantly for me was to realize that with a sober mind, it's trying to tell me, oh, it's gonna be different this time. Oh, if you just do it this way, it's gonna be fine. Or, oh, this isn't really gonna be that bad or nobody's gonna find out or, you know, all the little mm -hmm. things. My, my mind is constantly trying to trick me to get back into that mode. So once I figured those two things out, mm -hmm. then I was really able to go back in and look at like, what is motivating me to do this internally? And like a lot of those things I wasn't even really aware of until I really got down and did some work and did some inventories and looked at myself and was like, oh, wow. like you know, it was a lot bigger than I thought it was. Yeah. What was the main thing that you realized when you did that deep work? Um, number one, I was, I was super concerned with what other people were thinking about me all the time. And I was always put, like I said before, I was always putting thoughts into your head on what you might be thinking mm -hmm. about me. And I always had this like grandiose idea of, you know, um, just hanging out and like smoking weed like everybody i just want to be like everybody else mm -hmm. around me right yeah. like you know not all my friends are in recovery and mm -hmm. like i said i come from southern california i grew right. up skateboarding and you know going to underground parties and punk rock and all that stuff uh -huh. so i still know a lot of those people and yeah. i would see them doing that with impunity right, and I'd right. be like, you know, I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to admit that like, Hey, maybe I'm wired a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And you know, these things don't affect me the same way that they're affecting everybody else. For sure. So how did you have that conversation with people in your life that weren't in recovery, you know, that you were hanging out with and going and doing these things with, did you have that honest conversation with them about, you know, that you weren't going to drink and smoke weed or was it necessary or what was that experience like for you? Um, I don't think, I don't think it was really necessary for me to have like at the point where I ended up finally getting sober. Mm -hmm. Um, with that being said, I focused like 100% on getting sober once I realized that it was, it was that or, you know, death or jail or something right. like I've, I had beaten the, you know, uh, the word no was, was beaten out of me. I, when I, when I finally came around this time, yeah. okay, that like I'm going to do whatever I got to do. So mm -hmm. I didn't really like go around, um, you know, places that were maybe going to be risky for me for a while. Got it. Um, and then like, I guess with social media and stuff now and like people kind of like, like keep up with everybody on social media. So even if I don't see you, like most of my friends probably realize that like, you know, I had, I had gotten sober before I even ran into them again. So right. they're, you know, 
the conversation would more come up in a context of somebody else saying like, hey, I see that you got sober. I used to party with you. I'm having a problem, you know, drinking or whatever. Yeah. What did you do? Right. Right. right As opposed right. to like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Which was my greatest fear. I was always thinking people were going to be like, dude, what's wrong with you, yeah. bro? And yeah. it wasn't even like that. It was all, you know, it was, it was all, all up in, here. Yeah. It was yeah. all in your head. Yeah. I used to think that too. You know, yeah. I'd be thinking people would be like, oh, why can't you just control it? And yeah, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And come on, just have a few. Like, right. you're so strong in all these other ways. Like, what's right. the matter? You know, the things we tell ourselves and really it has nothing to do with any of those things. <laughs> yeah. So um, you see people in early recovery and they have a hard time with boundaries, figuring out how long to stay away from certain situations, people, relationships. Um, so for you, what did that look like? So did you start going back to those like, concerts and hanging out with those people or did you just say nah i'm not going to do any of this anymore so um i didn't go out to like anything really crazy probably for the first probably year i was sober okay you guys let's stop for a second you guys hear that <laughs> a year and that's so smart yeah that's honestly a year okay now i want to <laughs> say like with that being said does not mean i did not have fun in my first year sure. of sobriety yeah. right yeah. like i uh, i was conscious of my surroundings you know um but i was having a blast while i was getting sober but as far as like going out and like you know being in a place where you know, who knows what's going to go yeah. on. I mean, I volunteer with the consciousness group, um, which is a group of sober, uh, music lovers. And we volunteer okay. at a sober tent at like all these big rave parties, nocturnal wonderland, ADC. Um, we okay. have a booth at all these places. So we need to talk more about that it, afterwards. It, yeah. The show ends. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I was going out with them, which was cool. Cause I went with a sober, group of people out to, you know, I think the first one that I went out to was, um, I think it was EDC. Okay. I had to remember, but we went, I mean, there's like 30 That's of us. That's really cool. Everybody's in recovery. Everybody's sober. Yeah. Um, so it was a good way to like get reacquainted mm -hmm. with, with that kind of thing and, and have a, a new experience. I love that. And that's so important for people to know is that there's sober fun out there. You know, I, I was terrified. I talked to so many people when they first get sober and they're terrified. Like, I'm never going to have fun anymore. Oh, that's not I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do this. How do I hang out with people? Um, and so, yeah, for you, you're able to dial into that sober community. I have more fun now, yeah, really. And I, re too. I remember what happened. I know, it's um, so nice. I'm not regretting it the next day, y yeah. you know? Yeah. It, it's crazy, the addiction. You know, I would be blackout more times than not, yeah. right? And so the next day you don't remember anything. So what fun was that? Right. You feel like crap. So what yeah. fun was that? But then you just go right back and do yep. it again. Yep. Um, okay, so on a day-to-day -day basis, what keeps you sober? So today, um, you know, and it really, like when I first got sober, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, this is it. Life is over. I'm going to be, you know, it's going to take so much to do. And like after doing the initial amount of work and like just keeping up with, with the stuff that I had learned on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I wake up, I get connected, um, you know, with the universe or the power greater than myself, as you'd say, it kind of set my intention for the day. Um, and then I go to work. Um, I usually hit like maybe two or three meetings a week. I work with a couple new guys. Um, I keep in touch with, you know, uh, other sober people around me and that's pretty much it. Like, like I use the stuff that I learned getting sober to keep me sober, right? Mm -hmm. Like I try to have integrity, stay honest, um, not be in my, you know, old ideas or defects of character. And if I am to be aware of that and to fix it, you know, promptly and immediately, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to create any more, you know. We did enough of that. Yeah. That so stuff, right. Yeah. Um, I think it's so important to start your day like that. You know, I think starting your day, being grounded, tapping into whatever your spiritual source is, you know, being humble, being grateful. I always say like if for me that if I can stay humble and grateful throughout my day in gratitude, then nothing ever really goes wrong. Right. You know, like there's right. these things that happen because real yeah. life does happen in sobriety. It's not all rainbows yeah. and butterflies. Yeah. But if we can stay in that space, you know, of gratitude and uh, and connected yeah. with our God, then it's all going to be OK. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, 
What did you learn about yourself the most through this process? What's the, what's the most positive thing that you learned? Like, wow, I didn't realize that I was this or enjoyed this so much. Um, what's the most positive <laughs> thing I learned about myself through this thing? That I, I guess that I could be responsible, um, that I could be successful. Um, I always had a fear of failing at things, so I never really wanted to try anything. Mm. Um, you know, I had I had things that had happened to me in my life that I that I carried around with me and kind of used as a, you know, mm -hmm. oh, if you knew what had happened with me, you you would be this way too, right? Totally. Um, yeah. And I learned I could be free from that stuff, and I didn't have to let my past control my future or my present. You know, mm -hmm. I was I was like really. Just being free yeah. is the best part, For you sure. know? And I had no idea what that looked like. Yeah. Um, there's no way I could explain what what it is really, like to put words on it. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta do it and, and you'll know. Right, you know? and here you are today. You're helping others, you found your passion. Yeah. So what is your passion? What do you do that brings joy, brings this, helpfulness to others, this purpose, how did you find it? And what is it that you do? So, um, I, I like helping other people to find their own, um, their own selves in their own recovery, right? Like that's really like, it's the coolest thing to mm -hmm. see, I agree. to see other people get it and to see the lights come on and then yeah. to start to understand like, oh my gosh, there's so much more, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, just quitting drinking and doing drugs is really just the price of admission, right? That's just, sure. that's just getting your foot in the door yeah. around here. This is like so much more than that. And to see people really grow and pick up on all those things and to get their family back, you know, their kids back, their freedom back, their, you know, um, just back to themselves the way that they always wanted to be is like, mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's amazing. It's, yeah. a, it's a great thing to see. It's the best feeling. Yeah. So professionally, how did you get involved in working in the treatment field? How did that start? So, um, like I said, I was exposed to treatment when I was like 21. Mm -hmm. I didn't get sober till 2019. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's just say I had a lot of experiences at different places. Right. Um, and when I finally, um, got sober completely, um, I started working at a, at a treatment center that I had went through. Okay. Um, so I just started working from them from the bottom up and, um, I should backtrack. So I was, okay. I was Cali sober there for a little while. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, truth be told. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't really say anything and I had a job at a treatment center. Um, and I kind of let that job be like that, like tether to like not letting things get out of hand, but I was mm -hmm. still Cali sober there for a while. Uh -huh. So, um, then I left that job and then immediately things went off the rails within like a couple months. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, um, you know, landing myself back in treatment, went back through that program again, and then I started to work there. Yeah. I love that. And the rest is history. Yeah. So Eagle Creek Ranch, that's in Idaho, yes. right? Can you explain to everybody this amazing program that you own? Yeah, so um, Andrew Maloof and I Hi, have- Hi, Andrew. Yeah, what's up, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> um, him and I have worked together for a long time um, in this field off and on, and um, we always had like kicked around the idea of creating a program um, you know, um, for ourselves, right? And kind of just picking and and choosing all the different points of other programs that we went to, like, oh, we really like this that they do here, or mm -hmm. oh, this is really cool that they do over here. So we kind of just like, because we both did business development for a while, so we toured, you know, a lot of different programs yeah. and all over the country, really. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of like, we're building this, this rough blueprint over time. Um, and the opportunity presented itself for us to open up a program there in Boise, Idaho. And it was like, we prayed on it a lot. Um, and everything just kind of fell in, into the place where, where it needed to be for us to be able to do this. So, okay. yeah. And it's a detox residential detox program. Detox residential program. Um, it's all men at this point. It's in Boise, Idaho. It's on about a three acre property. Um, we have a huge barn in the back that we retrofitted in a clinical space, a gym, um, rec room, uh, and a big group room. And then we have the house, which is, um, I think, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five. I think four bedroom house. Um, 
It's and, yeah, beautiful. It's a beautiful guys. property. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go out there and just stay there because it yeah. just, it's so beautiful and just the area and just that serene feeling, oh, yeah. you know, of being able to really unplug yeah. and go somewhere and get that quality treatment with all the services that you guys offer there. Oh, yeah. Um, so what can what can somebody expect um, when they go there? If a loved one's watching this for their son or you know, there's men out there watching and they want to know like, okay, what am I going to experience if I go to this program? Yeah. So it's, you know, we've really geared it towards, um, first off, we set it in a place that is, like you said, it's really serene. It's nice. It's quiet. There's a lot of space there. It's far away from all the stuff that, you know, may have been plaguing you for a long time, mm -hmm. you know? So we put it in that location for a reason. Um, you know, it's a quick flight from, from here, but it's, you know, it's far enough away that, you know, you're going to have time to, to really, you know, relax. Um, yeah, you're going to get, you know, adventure therapy. That's a big part of our program. So okay. we take the guys out, you know, rock climbing, river rafting. Um, we work with an equine program out there, which is super, super cool. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Um, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We just took the guys out last week. Okay. Um, and the, the facilitator has... Um, has some really cool stuff that they do that I've never actually seen done in equine hmm. program that was pretty powerful. So we have a lot of different treatment modalities. Um, we have a really good clinical staff, uh, 24 hour nursing. So everybody's, you know, taken okay. care of that way. Um, and yeah, it's just a, it's, you know, it's a 30 day detox res program to really get separated from the drugs and alcohol for a while, start to work on the stuff that you need to work on and hopefully get you prepared to take that next step when you're done with us. Perfect. And so people that are watching that want more information, um, what's the website? So Eagle Creek Ranch Recovery.com is okay. the website. Um, our direct line is 208-369-7383. All right, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, what would you say to somebody out there struggling right now that hasn't been able to come forward yet, doesn't really know where to start, doesn't know who to call? Um, what would be your suggestion? Um, there's no shame in it, you know, talk to somebody, um, even, you know, you can call like the number that I just gave you. I'm sure your contact information is on there. Um, pick up the phone, even call like Alcoholics Anonymous central office or something. Just get yourself in touch with somebody, mm -hmm. tell them what's going on. And I think f admitting that you don't know is, is fine. You know, I think the first phone call can just be, Hey, I can't stop drinking or I can't stop getting loaded. I don't know what to do. Can somebody help me? You know what I mean? Right. Don't need to figure it all out. No. You that's, know? Just have that yeah. willingness to just say, I don't know. Totally. You know, yeah. and know that you're not alone. I mean, no. for me, that was one of the hardest things for so long is that I did not know how to ask for help. Right. You know, and especially if you're not hanging out with a bunch of people that are drug addicts or whatever and you're just going like i don't know what to do who right. do i talk to maybe it's at work who do i get in touch with so they can call you yeah absolutely i mean after you know what's gone on for the past couple years people being locked down people are at home the, you know they're isolated um people you know they're depressed i mean the levels of these things are showing up you know the numbers are just growing since yeah. since the lockdown yeah. so it's been really sad it, and it, and if you got your if you cut yourself like out of control without really realizing it you know um it's perfectly fine to ask for help there you know yeah if you got this much willingness we'll take you the rest of the way for sure yeah okay last question sure if you had to sum up what recovery means to you to someone that has no idea and you had to explain it to them the best you could, what would you say it is for you? It's being free. It's literally being free. Like, I, you know, I heard, it, I heard it explained one way that I thought was kind of cool. Um, it's be like trying to explain to somebody what it feels like, like the first time that you got high. Mm. Like you can't really explain what that is mm -hmm. until somebody did it. Getting sober is a hundred times better than that. I couldn't even describe to you how good it is. You just got to try it and you just got to do it. Right. You know, I would say give yourself 
give yourself like six months of time and just mm -hmm. just get engaged, get involved and just say, okay, and do the things that are suggested of you and you'll start to see things change. The magic, you know? yeah. yeah, the promises, they do come true, you guys. And uh, it, it's beyond your wildest dreams. You know, it gives me goosebumps with, with just talking to you about it and the freedom that comes in that, you know, it's when you're controlled by substances in every way, shape and form, mind, body, spirit, and then you're released from that. It's like, I always say, it's like we have the superpower now. For sure. Like we literally can do anything we want because we've been given a second chance at life. And why not us? Yeah. You know, instead of being the victim and being that, you know, we have these stories and it's so tragic and it is you guys, but why not overcome that and be like the best version of yourself and yeah. help other people along the way. Yeah. So thank you so much for being Thanks, here. Thanks Jenny for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks you guys, we'll see you next time, bye.